Hi, I'm Warren, and welcome back to this Intermediate Power BI course. Okay, in this video, we are going to open up Power BI, and we're going to import the data we're going to use. So if you go to your Power BI desktop, and you open up a new file, you will get to this screen here. Now, they do give you shortcuts to link to data from this first opening page. The best option always when you're importing data is to go to this transform data option and go into Power Query. The reason for this is when you open it from the, the desktop landing page itself, you're going to import all the data. So if you have a SQL Server with 10 million records and you link to it here, it will pull through all 10 million records initially. You don't want that. You first want to be able to preview the data before you import everything. So if you go into the transform data option, it always pulls the first thousand rows. So always best practice, import your data from here. Before we do that, another best practice is to go into the options of your Power BI file. So we go in here, we go to options and settings, and we go to options. Now by default, Power BI always tries to automatically link any data sets that you import. So if you have a column called ID in one table, and in a second table, there's another column called ID, Power BI will straight away create a relationship between those two columns, even if they aren't related. Which means if you're importing 50 tables, you might have to go back in and delete those relationships and recreate them. So it's always a good idea to disable that on the file that you're working on and then go and define the relationships yourself, which I'll show you how to do a little bit later. So when you open this on data load, it's always a good idea, if this is selected, this time intelligence tick box here, to deselect it. What this does, it automatically creates date tables for every date field in your different tables. We are going to be creating our own date table, so there's no need for that. So we always deselect that. Without deselecting that, it creates these date tables that take up a lot of space in your model. So best practice is always to delete that or deselect that. When we go to our current file, these are our global settings. When we go to our current file on data load, you can see how it detects column types, import relationships from data sources on first load, update. This auto detect new relationship, new relationships is what we need to deselect. That will automatically, anything that has the same name, it will create a relationship between them. And we don't want that. Again, you can see here our time intelligence is not selected. If there are any new features, you can go and you can choose them here. Power BI every month is releasing new versions. It's a good idea to keep an eye on what they are including in newer versions, and you can go and you can add them into your model from this preview features option here. But anyway, we're happy just doing that deselect of those two options. We can click OK. So now what we can do, we can go and import our data. So as I recommended, we're going to transform data. And this opens up the Power Query window. And now what we can do, we can go and import data. So we can go to New Source. And here, you can either go to More if the source you're looking for is not here. We're connecting to Excel, so that's fine. We can click on Excel. It's taking a bit of time here. Let's see, maybe Excel is open. Let me just have a look and see why this is not opening up here. Oh, there we go, finally. And then we want to go and get our source data. So I'm going to go to my intermediate Power BI folder here. You would go and find the folder that has the data that you can find in the description of the video and download and click on open. So here Power BI creates a connection. And what it does, it opens this little window here, and it will show you all the pages or worksheets in your Excel workbook 
and you can go and select the ones you want to pull through. So we don't need to pull through our business questions. We do want our sales data. And now you can see it creates a little window so you can preview the data. We want our store data. We want our product data and we want our customer data and we can click OK. Now, normally you would probably be connecting to one table at a time. So you might pull through sales, go into Power Query and check it, go back to a new data source or this data source you've just created and look at the next data set. We've pulled them all through in one go. But because we're in the Power Query window, you can see that only the first thousand rows have been pulled through. So that's why it's always best to do this. You can go and have a look and see Maybe this isn't the data you're wanting to pull in, and at least you haven't pulled through 10 million records, for instance. So we can go and check. Yes, this is what we want. We're happy. And then when you close and apply, Power BI will then pull through the full data set. So always best practice, connect your data from Power Query. So now the first step is to go through and see, do we need to do any transformations on our data? Is everything in the format that we expect it to be in? A lot of the time, with creating test data like this, Power BI is clever enough to identify the data type for each column, but it's always good to check and to change the columns to the data type that you want. So if we're looking at our sales transaction table, you can see the ID is a number, which we're happy with. The customer ID is a number, we're happy with that. Product ID is a number, store ID is a number, quantity is a number, and price is a number. So we're happy with that. In our data here, we don't have decimals, but if there were decimals, you could just change this to a decimal number, for instance. But we're not going to do that, but you could if you wanted to. And yeah, you can see it's already picked up that this is a date field because it's got a little calendar in the corner there. So if it wasn't, you would right click, change type, and you would choose date. So in this data set here, we're happy that all of our IDs are numeric. Our price is numeric and our date column is a date data type. On stores, our ID is a number, we're happy. The store name is text, that's perfect. The address is text. Latitude and longitude have always got to be decimals. So make sure that it's showing decimals on your side. If it isn't, you can go through change type and choose decimal number. On product, our ID is a number. Product name is text, category is text, and our price is a number. Again, we don't have any where there are decimals. If you, in the real world, there probably would be decimals, you'd make that a decimal number. And customers, we have customer ID. That's a numeric. We've got text. Age is numeric. We want this to be numeric because we are going to define buckets for the age groups, and we're going to want to define ranges between this range and between this age and this age, we want it to be this bucket. So this has to be numeric for us to do a calculation on it. If we were just displaying it, it could be a text, but because we're going to want to create buckets of this, we need to make sure that this is a number. Gender is text, occupation is text, and city is text. So luckily for us, Power BI is clever enough to have formatted our data correctly. There isn't much we have to do, but often you would need to go and change the data types if you ever see a data type where it has an ABC and a 1, 2, 3 here, that means that Power BI couldn't determine what it is. And those are the ones that you need to go in and correct because there it's just saying that it doesn't understand what field it is. But if it's either an ABC or a 1, 2, 3, that's fine. If it shows ABC, 1, 2, 3 in the same little block here, that would be one that you want to go and clean up. So, okay, so we're happy with our data. So now what we can do, we can just click on close and apply. So Power BI is now going and it's loading a full data set. It's creating the connections for each table and it'll import all the data. Perfect. So here you can see we have our different tables, product table, sales table, and our store table. And if you want to see the data in those tables, you can go to this data view and you can see here we have our customer data, we have our product data, sales data, and our store data. 
And if we go through here to our model view, you can see all our tables and there are no relationships defined, which is a good thing because we want to be able to define our own relationships between the different tables. So what we're going to do now, we're going to define our relationships. So we know that our sales table is our transactional table and our customer product and store table are dimensions. And these you can drag up and down to show all the fields, or you can collapse them just to show the names of the tables. But what we want to go and do now is define everything in what we call a star schema, which is the way that you want to have your data in Power BI, which means you have a fact table and you have dimension tables linked to that fact table. So it looks like a star. So from our customer table, we have customer ID here and we have a customer ID here. So Power BI would have defined that relationship automatically because they have the same name, but we prefer to do it ourselves. It's just a better practice to do it. So all you do is click on customer ID, you drag and you drop onto customer ID here. And here you can see it's created a relationship. And what it's doing, it's saying there's a one here and there's a many here. The star means many. So this is a one to many relationship, meaning the customer would appear once in our customer master, but could have purchased many times in our data. So it's one record, filters, many records here. And you can see the arrow is pointing down. That's the best practice. Your dimension should always flow down into your transaction or fact table. Here we have product ID and we have product ID. So you can either drag, click on that and drag that down and drop it on product ID, or you could click on this table and drag it up. Doesn't matter. Here again, you can see one product appears once in our product table, but we can have sold many of those products in our sales table. So that's one too many. And then stores, we can go and we can drag our store ID to store ID. Another way of defining these relationships is you can actually go into our relationship table, manage relationships here. And you can see these are the ones we've just defined. You can go and you can add a new one here and you can choose your tables from here. So you can go stores to sales. And yeah, you can see it's highlighted store ID, but for instance, if it had highlighted this, you would go and choose the field you wanna to join to the field you wanna join here. The cardinality is one to many. The top one is always first. So this is one store to many sales for each store and it's single direction. That's best practice and you can click okay. So that's another way of defining the relationship. And there you can see it put it in for me. So you can either drag and drop or you can go into manage relationships. So there we've got our tables and they all filter down into our transaction table. And normally when there are a lot of them, you would have them positioned around your fact table. So you would have your fact or transaction table in the middle and your dimension tables round. And that's why they call this a star schema because it looks like a star with the points going out like that. Just to keep things nice and neat, I normally have my dimensions at the top and I have my fact table at the bottom. And you can see then it should always be one to many, one to many, one to many. So you can very clearly see the many is on the transaction side and the ones are on the dimension side and they're all flowing down. So we know that we've done it correctly. So there we've defined our relationships there. So I'm gonna leave it at that for this video. In the next video, we are going to add our date table because we need a date dimension to be able to do time analysis. So thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.